Hi everyone, it's Jen with opensource.com bringing you the top five articles this week, September 26th. Jason Hibbets filled in for me last week. Thanks, Jason, and thanks everyone for your well wishes. I had a wonderful wedding, and I'm very glad to be back. All right, let's kick this off. As always, you can find the articles in our show notes below, as well as the article we publish every Sunday. At number five this week, we have open source tools help kids discover digital creativity. Michael Harrison, a staff writer at opensource.com and our social media guru, interviews the founder and director of Youth Digital. Justin Richards tells Michael about their curriculum as he shows him around their Durham office in North Carolina. He says GIMP, Inkscape, Eclipse, and Blender are among the open source software tools Youth Digital uses to teach kids about graphic design and programming in on-site classes. I particularly liked this quote from the interview. I tell the kids jokingly, in a hundred years we may have robots that program for us, but we'll still have to conceptualize, debug, design, and develop those robots. That won't change. At number four, we have three tools to make creating presentations easy. Joshua Holm reviews the simple to use presentation framework Bespoke JS. This tool differs from other review, others reviewed on opensource.com because at number four, we have three tools to make cre creating presentations easy. Joshua Holm reviews the simple to use presentation framework Bespoke At number four, we have three tools to make creating presentations easy. Joshua Holm reviews the simple to use presentation framework Bespoke JS. This tool differ, differs from other, others reviewed on opensource.com before, like Reveal JS, which creates wonderful but rather traditional presentations, and Impress JS, which is more complex, creating Prezi-like presentations that rotate, zoom, and scale in three dimensions. Bespoke JS is a presentation framework that Joshua says sits at the opposite end of the complexity scale. At number three, why Python 4.0 won't be like Python 3.0. Nick Colhan posted this article first on his personal blog, Curious Efficiency. Nick describes himself as a CPython core developer, PSF director, Red Hat toolsmith, cognitive science dabbler, and cynical idealist. In this article, Nick addresses concerns and expectations for the release of Python 4.0. Don't expect much. He says there will be no profound changes to the language, no major backwards compatibility breaks. Nick goes on to tell us how Python will evolve in the future, continuing to address backwards incompatible changes. All right, at number two, we have three tools that make scanning on the Linux desktop quick and easy. Scott Nesbitt reviews three scanning tools for Linux. He use, has used these extensively and found they work well. They are SimpleScan, GScan 2 PDF, and the GIMP. Finally, at number one, we have Community at the Speed of Light, Best Practices for the New Era of Open Source. Greg DeConisberg, Vice President of Community for Ansible, a powerful automation engine that makes systems and applications simple to deploy, co-writes this article with Ansible CTO Michael DeHaan. They write to share with us some of the open source practices that have helped make Ansible successful over the past year, particularly in the DevOps community. That's the relationship with the open source community that's key. Here's, hear how they engage developers and users to generate serious participation in the Ansible community in a short period of time. Thanks for tuning in this week to the top five. You can also watch the video on YouTube. Thanks for tuning in this week. Stay tuned for next week's every Friday. Thanks for tuning in this week. See you next time.